What's up, guys, and thanks for tuning in for another episode of Two Car Garage, an exciting episode because we're about to unveil our next project covered up behind me here. So I know some of you guys were trying to guess what it is, right? I said it was a Honda, and I said it was totally different than the last project that we did. Remember, we just finished up building a 1965 Honda Dream. It's 300 cc's, so two cylinders, 300 cc's from 1965. So what is this one? It's a 2005, it is a Honda, and it is only two cylinders. Can you guess? Right, Some of you uh, Honda motorcycle people might already be able to guess what it is, especially because you see the sheer girth of it behind me. Right, So like I said, 2005, two cylinders, and I don't think I want to give away the engine size quite yet because that is the coolest part of it. So let's stop beating around the bush here and unveil what our next project is. All right, here we go. Check it out. Well, it sure is different than the Honda Dream, isn't it? Uh, this is a 2005 Honda VTX 1800F. So the VTX came in two variations, the 1300 and the 1800. This, of course, duh, is the 1800. And it is the F model, which was a special trim package, came with bigger wheels, lots of chrome from the factory. That's the one to get if you're gonna find one. Let's check it out now. Now, I didn't lie to you when I told you it was a Honda with only two cylinders, right? I just didn't tell you how big those cylinders were. So when this bike came out, the VTX 1800, it was the biggest V-twin in the entire world. That's right, the biggest V-twin in the world. And that was kind of short-lived. I think Kawasaki came out with a 2000cc monster shortly thereafter. But nevertheless, this thing is huge. So let's give you the specs on it, or at least the lay of the land here. So V-twin, five-speed transmission, shaft drive, normal shocks in the back, the controls are sort of forward controls already. Looks like dual, uh, dual piston caliper in the front. And what types of brakes are we looking at in the back here? And it looks like it's also dual piston, which is nice. The F trim package that this is um, from the factory has these drilled rotors, which is pretty nice. As you can see, the front has twin disc and the rear, just that one. It is also liquid cooled. So I'm not a huge fan because it complicates things, right? But it is pretty nice on these big hot V twins to have liquid cooling. If you're sitting in traffic and it's 100 degrees outside, you're not worried about it overheating. We keep moving on. All of these chrome bits, like these bullet turn signals, they're from the factory. Um, and I think a lot of these chrome bits are factory as well with the F uh, trim designation. You have this cool sort of forward swept headlight, which is neat. Lots and lots of chrome on this thing, um, which, you know, um, take it or leave it, right? You can love it or hate it. I'm not a huge fan. Um, if it, you know, if it were my personal bike, I might not put this much chrome on it, but this is how it is. I mean, the, uh, there's literally chrome covering everything. Even the uh, reflectors here has little chrome covers. Same thing in the back, these bullet turn signals. Looks like a cool little slim tail light right there. Now we get to the modifications. So first of all, you see that this thing is uh, factory paint with gray and then darker gray, sort of electric firebolt flames on the fenders uh, and the tank. I think the person who owned this bike was probably got it when he 
or she, but probably he was 50, maybe 60 years old, had a lot of money to spend on Chrome and just bits for it, but didn't ride it a lot. It's only got 15,000 miles and it hasn't run in probably five or 10 years. So, but we'll get there. First, let's check out some of the modifications that were made to it. This seat is a Corbin seat. Listen, somebody, somebody spent a lot of money on this thing to get like, snakeskin texture and red embossed flames in it, right? This seat was probably like a four or $500 Corbin seat. Um, you know, it's got, it's got red flames on it. Uh, what more do you, what, what more can you want in a motorcycle? You have this tank pad and strap here. It looks like um, a little mount to mount like a cell phone or GPS or something. Up on the controls, we have matching flame grips here, you know, probably cost a hundred bucks right there. I mean, if you want to see cool, check these babies out. I mean, look at these sweet mirrors. I mean, look, they're, oh, oh they're kind of loose, but so that, like I said, this guy spent a lot of money, right, on like chrome flame stuff but didn't actually drive it all that much. You have little things, I, I doubt it's factory, but it's cool, uh, like this chrome sort of cable holder for the brake cables, that's kind of neat. The tires um, have seen better days, uh, but there's still a little bit of tread on them. Actually, let me see if we can see when these tires are from. Let's see that code right there? I don't know if you can read it, but that says 0905. That means that this tire was manufactured in September of 2005. That is when this bike came out. So that is the original rear tire for the motorcycle. And it looks like it still has plenty of tread left. So old, yeah, but you know, this thing was kept inside. You can see all the cobwebs and stuff all over it but it looks like it was probably temperature controlled inside because there's no uh, cracking or dry rotting on the tires. So that's kind of nice. So that brings us to the next point of this bike. It said, oh, oh crap, I almost forgot one of the most exciting things. Check out this baby, hypercharger. I think these are called the hyperchargers. Um, it's basically an intake where it replaces the main intake on it and it's vacuum. Uh, it runs off of vacuum pressure. So you have the butterflies right here and those butterflies, I think this is how it works. As you crack the throttle and create more vacuum pressure, I think the butterflies open and close um, to allow more or less air in at different throttles. From what I understand, you know, it, it kind of looks cool and you know, he spent several hundred dollars on it, but I don't think it like adds that much more power. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, dang, if whoever this guy was spent that much money on flame grips, flame mirrors, and a hypercharger, there's got to be something hooked up to that computer under the seat, right? Under this very expensive red flame Corbin seat. So try to guess what's under that seat, and you would probably guess correct. If you guessed that this bike, of course, has a power commander, then you are right. I always get a kick out of people that install power commanders on bikes. Um, you know, usually it just makes them run worse. Usually the power commander just dumps more fuel than you need in at different RPMs, and it ends up just running really rich. I'm not sure how this one will run, though, because it is getting more air from the hypercharger. It is getting more fuel from the power commander. And it does have your, you know, standard Vance and Hines long shot exhaust on as well, which is kind of neat. So who knows, it might actually run somewhat decent even with the Power Commander. So behind this cover here, let me just set this down gingerly. We have this wire, which had a plug that got ripped off, and it's connected to this little baby. What is that? Hmm, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Looks like maybe some sort of like transponder um, or something like that that's connected then to all these wires. I kind of have to follow them. Like maybe it's an alarm system or something. You can see it like taped right there. So I kind of have to follow the wires and see where they go. 
but it hooks up to that switch that he drilled into the side cover. So that's switched. Whatever that, whatever this is, you can turn it on or off, I guess. So I don't know. That'll take some digging into. You can tell by looking at the chrome how long this thing has been sitting. Everything just has this solid patina all over it. All the chrome just is coated in just dirt and grime and dust and cobwebs, right? So sure it's not rusted because it was kept inside it looks like it was temperature controlled but it sat for a very very long time now we get to the gas tank uh, the gas tank is the big pickle in this lunch because if you want to open the gas tank you flip it put the key in and then nothing so that's gonna be the issue, right? You know what, I'm eager to start working on it even though I'm not gonna really dive in super heavy right now. So we can't do anything until we get this gas cap off. So how should we take it off? I honestly don't know because I don't wanna break the key off inside by trying to over rotate it. So I think if those little wings are seized, I think what I'm gonna do is um, just start hitting around this entire thing, tapping it with a hammer, of course with you know ru rubber in between it or whatever, um, to see if I can knock those little wings loose. Maybe I'll have to heat it up or something like that. Um, yeah, you know, it's not the ignition cylinder, so you might be thinking, why don't I just spray some PB blaster in there or something. Uh, like I said, it's not the ignition, it's not the cylinder itself, like the locking cylinder with the pins, that's okay. So I don't think it'll do much good, but I'll still do it anyway. <laughs> I was afraid to use vice grips originally because you can add too much torque and then you'll snap the key off, right? But I'm gonna be sure I don't do that and just be nice and gentle. Got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Yes. Okay, I'm. Yes. I'm gonna let you look at the inside with me. Do you think there's gas in it? Do you think it's empty? Do you think that it looks like tar on the inside? Let's see, let me turn off the fan. All right, here we go. Oh, it's sticky. Oh, it's sticky. Oh my gosh. Ugh. All right, see, and that doesn't look that bad, right? But watch. Oh no. Oh, that's nasty. Look at that. Oh, that's nasty. Ew. actually worse than I thought. I can just scrape and look at what I get. The whole inside of the tank. Man. It's actually worse than I thought. Yeah, the whole inside. Now imagine that like in all of the fuel lines, right? Ugh, my gosh. Okay, I, I don't think it's rust. It's just varnish like that. So, um, yeah, we'll just have to clean it out. I guess. All right, so we did get the gas cap off. However, um, no good news came from that. You could see the inside of the tank was completely destroyed. Um, that like thick varnish is just coating everything. I think what we're gonna do is pull the gas tank and just fill it basically with paint thinner. Um, let it soak like that overnight and then rinse it out, do it again, rinse it out, do it again, and hopefully that just strips it. Um, yeah, we'll get it the best we can, and then after that we'll worry about the lines. Hopefully that thick varnish hasn't clogged up every single line and every fuel injector, or else uh, we're gonna have to just start replacing stuff if we can't clean it out.
So we've got our work cut out for us on our 2005 Honda VTX 1800. Got to get this fuel system in check before we do anything else. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for another awesome episode of Two Car Garage and another great start to what should be a fantastic project. Be sure you guys like, subscribe, and comment down below. Hit that bell notification so you know when new videos drop every Sunday. Thanks.